Injection! Hello, every pony. I'm Master Code, your ace analyst, and today we return once again to the G5 comics with issue number six. If you'll recall in the previous issue, the gang was beckoned to a mysterious lighthouse owned by a unicorn named Lightning Rod that supposedly possessed information on the Lord of Chaos's whereabouts. After a series of tales about the Mirror of Mayhem and its connection to Discord, the gang left with the remaining piece of the mirror, which would help locate him. Starting this issue, we begin at Wayne Enterprises? Beautiful, isn't it? Beautiful, unethical, dangerous. Seriously, where the hell are we? A secret underground bunker? Sever Heights? The Bright House? Also, why, no, how are there security cameras all around Canterlot? The city's disappeared for generations, yet it looks like it's got more coverage than the CIA. And since these five, besides Discord, are literally the only ones who know about Canterlot, or at least the first ones in a thousand years to discover it, this implies that they are the ones who installed them. Or was Twilight that paranoid in her later years and installed a security system, and the gang somehow tapped into the camera's signal? Monitor everything. Either way, it doesn't make any sense. Also, you could have just cut this whole opening bit and just started the story back in Canterlot, with the group wanting to check for additional clues. And what about the Mirror of Mayhem? You know, the thing we just established in the previous issue to help locate Discord? Whoa! Did the writers already forget about it? It's called Chekhov's gun, damn it! But okay, let's move on. My brain hurts already. Upon arrival, they discovered that Reginald Versum is still around, preparing to travel to wherever Discord is hiding. A surveillance camera? Also, continuity-wise, is this supposed to be before or after Alicorn, where Sunny better understands her Alicorn magic, or is this just another random outburst? Anyway, they continue to covertly follow Reginald, well, at least as much as possible, until pretty much everyone here is hit with a stupid stick. Oh, 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 they spotted me. What was wrong with just following the guy all the way to his hideout? Everything was going fine until Izzy announced their presence and Zip wanted to directly confront him. Stupid. Izzy says she wants the diplomatic route because she says that her and Reginald are quote-unquote friends, but they've never had any interactions together. As for Zip, she's usually very forward in her actions when investigating, but she usually has at least some tact and observation before deciding to converge upon some pony. Pip distracts everyone with her live streaming, and Hitch is pretty much the only level-headed one here concluding that Reginald is 100% loyal to Discord, and diplomacy is pretty much going to be impossible. But it turns out that Pip's folly may actually have turned out for the better, as they determined from her livestream recordings that Reginald has been following the river. They continue to follow the path, which leads to this very awkward dialogue exchange between Izzy and Sunny. It looks like Izzy is really upset with Sunny at first, but no, she's not, and they're just having a regular conversation. Now, this scene does go back to issue number one, where Izzy felt left out not being able to participate with Sunny in the game of flyball. I was glad we finally came back to this, addressing a relatable conundrum of not being able to hang out with all of your friends all of the time. And having a heartfelt conversation about it, which could lead to some character and maturity growth for both. Only for the conversation to be immediately dropped in less than a page. That was pointless. So where does this dream lead? Why, to the abandoned home of Fluttershy. <coughs> All right, I'll admit that Discord someone hiding in plain sight in the humble abode of his friend is pretty clever. However, it still makes no sense. The Lost Ruins of Canterlot had the benefit of being magically locked away behind the Gate of Ancients to hide its location. Right now, we are outside, in the open, where any pony who walks by or flies over it could see it. Even after generations, how could this location not be preserved, or even be addressed by the public? And how does it even still exist? You can't just keep throwing iconic locations at the audience without explanation. Anyway, they learned from the local wildlife that Discord has been using this location for research purposes and begin exploring the home where they come across a crystal containing a recording of Fluttershy. Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. You're my only hope. So through the crystal, we get a flashback of Fluttershy and Discord butting heads over the status of magic in Equestria, which instills his vendetta to rid magic forever, while Fluttershy pleads how magic brought the two of them and all of the world together. The two's reactions feel authentic, with Discord making rash decisions and Fluttershy being kind, but assertive to reach out to the Draconicus. And so the issue ends with Discord far away with apparently his key to victory, a 
Daring Do book as he prepares to finalize his plans for getting rid of magic. In the end, I gotta say, this is the weakest comic for G5. True, there's some interesting setup and interactions in this story, but the dialogue, the pacing, the numerous questionable aspects and characters not acting like themselves make this such a bizarre entry in the series. Besides the initial new generation movie, the comics were the best thing about G5. Now I'm starting to lose faith in this medium too. Although, I guess it did take a solid five issues before something disappointing came around, so I guess that's something. I can only hope things pick up in the next issue, because you can only drag out this conflict for so long before it wears out its welcome. Well, that's it for today, guys. Until next time, MC out!